Good morning, Michael Havers here from Penn News, and today I'm in Hitchin. Now, there are a number of constituencies that were competed for at the 2019 general election that do not exist this time round, and this is one of them. That's a good thing, by the way. Um, you know, over time, populations change, some places get more populated, some less so, and we want all voters to have roughly the same amount of voting power. We want all MPs to represent approximately the same number of people, and so it makes sense over time to redraw the political map every now and then, just so that it keeps up with the changed reality. Now, the political map that's making its debut on July 4th in this general election is one that ought to slightly favour the Conservative Party. And we know that because if you were to take the results of the 2019 general election, feed them into a computer with this new map, the same number of votes for the same parties in the same places, what you'd find is actually that the Conservative Party came away with seven additional MPs and the opposition with seven fewer. So it should be harder for the Labour Party to win a general election with this new political map. But the Conservatives are having such a disastrous campaign, really I think it's the worst I've seen from any party in my lifetime, that it's hard to imagine electoral boundaries making that much of a difference. But even if the overall lay of the land was supposed to be slightly improved for the Conservative Party by this new redrawn political map, then even then there were going to be individual Tory MPs who lost out, who found that their district was redrawn in a way that was not advantageous to them. And that's exactly what has happened here. You see, the MP here is Bim Afalami, who is a rising star of the Conservative Party. He's often wheeled out on the television to say nice things about the government when another scandal hits. And the seat he represents here, or did represent up until Parliament was dissolved, was Hitchin and Harpenden. And Harpenden is a very true blue, conservative voting, safe Tory area. And Hitchin, while it has plenty of Tory votes too, is a bit more competitive for Labour. Between here and there, there's obviously plenty of true blue countryside as well. So the end result was you had a pretty safe conservative seat. The new district, however, the way it's been redrawn, uh, Harpenden's been portioned off into another constituency, and Hitchin is going to be competing as a new constituency with its surrounding villages for the first time. So the result is a much more competitive proposal for Labour, and that's before the Tories decided to blow up this election campaign. So we have the capacity for an upset here on July 4th, perhaps another brick tumbling from that once proud blue wall that stretched across the home counties. And we could see a rising star of the Conservative Party chucked out of the House of Commons. We won't know for sure until the results come in, but until then the best we can do is to talk to the voters. So let's get started. Uh, so first of all, how do you feel the government's getting along? <laughs> yes. The government is meant to be leaders. We have no leadership and I'm afraid the Conservative Party is showing itself to be rotten to the core. I'm absolutely fed up with them. They've had 14 years to make changes and all we get is sleaze. Um, I can't admire any of them. So I'm completely disillusioned. I guess in some ways a letdown, but in other ways I guess they've had a pretty tough time in governance. Um, so mixed bag. Uh, they've overstayed their welcome, but I feel like they've also been kneecapped a little bit at certain stages. Uh, yeah, I, I really don't like them at all. I think that they are only out for themselves and their mates. I mean, I, I disagree with their, <laughs> their basic principles anyway, but I think that the whole thing with the Covid parties just showed that they think that they can do what they like, basically, and that they are set aside from the general public. Right. And this whole thing with the betting scandal just proves it once again. So how do you feel about the government? How do you think they're getting on? Um, not very well. I think overall it needs a complete overhaul. I think it needs a completely different way of dealing with matters and looking at things. I think a new way of looking at it, a new, a new system is what we need. I think it's just been to the detriment of the, the country at least the last 10 years and they seem to not be able to make decisions. There's infighting and there's more about themselves than, than anybody else. Where do you start? Shambles doesn't even begin to touch it, does it? So There's nothing more I can say, really. They do, do a disgrace. Has the needle moved for you at all on this election campaign? No. No, no, no I would never have voted for the shower that are in now. Um, and they're certainly not getting my vote next time. Well, we've got a decent Prime Minister having to handle people who have no moral compass. And I suppose we see that by the very fact they were prepared to accept 
Boris Johnson. Uh, I think it's been very difficult for them with COVID and the war and uh, there's, there's been some minor stuff going on about silly bets and sleaze as there always is and always will be with any sort of government uh, and they've been in for 14 years everyone's a bit pissed off of them but uh, they're infinitely better than what's coming down the tracks I think. I mean you mentioned that they've had some sort of a difficult inheritance what, what would be some of the problems that sort of stand out to you that might have made Covid up? would be uh, um, you, know, uh, you know government in my time has I would say dealt with something even similar um, I guess war, we can use the war in Ukraine, but you know, we have gone through wars mm. with other countries. But no, I think Covid, uh, you know, especially for my age, is, uh, I think any government would have struggled and I think every, any government would just be inheriting what they're about to inherit if anyone was in power. What, what do you think they've been doing poorly? What have been the things that stood out to you? Just genuinely the way that it's handled, the way that they behave. It's just... I've not seen anything good come from it, right. in my personal opinion. The British football team's performance, uh, the last performance, was typical of how the company, country's performing. Right. Everyone fiddles about, and when things don't go too well, they dodge, dodge away from the problem. How do you feel about Mr Sunak specifically? Uh, I think he's a very naive politician. I think he's a very well-meaning guy. I think um, I think Farage had a point talking about him the other week uh, because I don't feel that he's got any real roots. You know, his his his, his family in India and he went to America to live, and then that had something to do with Kenya. I think he he says he's British, which is fine, but I'm not so sure he's going to stay here when he finishes. You know, he's he's a little bit of a a globe trial, which is fine, but I think there was a, you know, a slight point in what Farage had to say about it the other week. And, uh, but as I say, he's, he's a really well-meaning good guy, sensible, but I think he's a very naive politician. Flip the question on its head, how do you feel about the Labour lot? I'm not keen on them either. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll vote Labour, but I mean, I'm holding my nose a little bit because I probably have slightly more left-wing views than the route they're going at the moment. They're better than the incumbent, so it can't be worse, can it? So we've got to give them a go. I would say getting better, but not quite there yet. I think um, the new leader is better. A little bit more concise, but still just not sure, not sure. If they win, good on them. Um, we could do with a change. Uh, that being said, personally, I probably won't vote for them because, as I said, I think the whole system at the minute is wrong and I think it needs a complete overhaul and something drastically needs to change um, but good on them if they win. I'm a li little bit disappointed that Keir Starmer doesn't actually project a backbone. I hope he has one when he takes office. I just don't think uh, the, the, the quality of, the, of even the Tories who are poor and I look at people like Rachel Reeves and uh, 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 talking about the economy and you know, they, they just don't inspire me. Starmer's been put in. He agreed with Corbyn. He disagreed with Brexit. He's, you know, he's, he's, he is on the wrong side of every public opinion thing that's going. Well, I think that they haven't been tested yeah. because the Conservatives have been in so long. Yeah. I think that Keir Starmer has done a great job in kind of um, maybe. Uh, a, a slower pace than the Conservatives but taking it to a point where a lot more people I think will be giving him the benefit of the doubt. And but his party I think also he's got a bigger, he's managed to you know use the whip effectively I, yeah. I guess you could say. Do you think he's, he's, he's been effective at transforming the party from what it was in the 2019 one? At least perceived, um, at least perceived. But yeah. not tested? No. I think that they need to spend a lot more money on public services and schools hospitals in particular um, and I don't really agree with their stance on Palestine but you know I don't know that much about it so I don't like to sure <laughs> it's not gonna it's not gonna make you withhold your vote from them though no who do you think he's going to need to show that backbone to who do you think he's going to have to stand up to I think he's got to show it to all those who believe they deserve something and don't accept that the country can't
can't afford. Years ago it was said that the poor should eat cake. Now I think we have to say uh, the core should eat bread and we shouldn't be expecting to have for quite some time butter and jam on it. Right, so, so cake's definitely off the menu for now. You're right. And uh, they're only ever in for one, two maximum labour. I know Blair was different, but they won't be any good. There's not, no way they'll rescue this economy. It needs proper conservatism. It needs people to cut their cloth accordingly. Furlough money's got to be paid back. It's going to be difficult for a few years. We should have took it on the chin and keep the people in and know how to work the money. It'll be interesting to see that when some of the major issues come up, as in like a pandemic um, or something of that nature, and it's left right in within the Labour Party, which way you go. Hello, and before we continue, can I invite those of you who are watching on YouTube to drop us a like, and please subscribe so that way you don't miss out on future videos, and it gives the channel a little bit of a boost too. If you found something that someone said today objectionable, uh, and you'd like to have a moan, please do so in the comments. That's where we get out all those negative feelings, and some of the good feelings too. If you think someone's very wise and prescient, let's hear from you and see what you think. Um, and can you also check out the Pen News Substack at pennews.substack.com That's pennews, P-E-N-N-E-W-S dot substack.com where you can find our weekly Vox Pops in full along with analysis as well as all the other stories we're working on in the course of the week. Okay, that's it for now and uh, let's get back into it. And have you guys given any thoughts to how you might vote in this election? No, I'm not. not I, it's still open. <laughs> still open. It's, it's, crazy, the two, yeah. it's the next yeah. couple of weeks. Yeah. I've voted Lib Dem. I've just put it in the post box. Oh, you've just you've just come back from doing your postal vote. Yep. Oh, okay. So I thought, well, let them. They won't get in. I know, but at least they'll disrupt things. Mm. I shall vote Labour, but then I normally vote Labour anyway. I generally vote whenever the opportunity is there, but this year, I, I'm really torn because I don't know. I don't know who would actually make a positive impact. Is the reason why you're not going for a party that's perhaps further to the left because of the nature of this particular seat? Because you think it's going to be yeah, Labour or... Yeah. Right, so you, it's going to be one or the other, you go, I'll, I'll take Labour out of the two. Yeah, well, I mean, it feels like Lib Dems could have an argument to say that they should be winning this seat, mm. but um, it feels like they're not really throwing their money where their mouth is on this one. Right. So it's going to be Labour versus Conservative and... Uh, you know, I'm not going to vote Conservative. I thought about voting for reform and decided that I wouldn't do so because it has a new leader. Mm -hmm. uh, do you not like Mr Farage in particular, is it? I don't like him in particular. Right. Uh, is there anything in particular that puts you off of him? Yes, if he came to me as a salesman uh, trying to sell his goods to me, uh, I would, I'm afraid, not trust him. Farage is a populist, but uh, and you know he, he taps into what what most people, uh, a lot of, well I would say the large percentage of people in this country think, uh, but it's in complete disagreement with uh, the liberal elites. You know they uh, when they were given a referendum, everybody thought everybody wanted to remain. When it was given to the public, the public wanted to leave. And weren't tempted by any of the other parties, Green or Reform or. Oh. No, reform and green, I think, just waffle. Not for you. No. I, I mean, their aspirations are good, but they never go, I don't think they'll ever go in. I, I know you guys are undecided, but is there anyone you're leaning away from or towards? Conservatives. Away from away conservatives, from. right. Well, it yeah. needs, it, 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 they need to, uh, and are, we're historical conservatives. Mm. Um, as in, as in, you have voted Conservative previously, you guys. Uh, he has a, uh, an ex-Conservative councillor as a granddad. And, right. Uh, so you know we've been kind of true blues yeah. um, through thick and thin, but it's just now gone too. It's gone too far, or it's time for a change. And yeah. normally, being Conservative, you. you um, I still stick conservative, yeah. but this time it'll be somebody different. Yeah, I feel like the, the Labour may be untested, but they're also almost indifferent at this point mm. to you know, a centrist Tory party. Drawn away from conservative, I think they've been in long enough and they've not shown enough. Mm -hmm. um, 
drawn towards reform, actually. Um, sure. Because I think that's the only chance of having something actually different in. Mm. Um, whether or not it happens, I don't know, we'll see. But um, I don't agree with everything they have to say, but certain parts of what they're doing, I think, is going in the right direction. But then uh, the whole system needs an overhaul. That's you keep saying this whole system needs an overhaul. Do you have any idea what that would look like? It needs stripping back and looking at it again. It needs to be more people focused. In the past, are you happy to share how you might have voted in previous elections? Uh, yeah, I think I've always voted Labour. Always voted Labour, okay. But uh, ever with more enthusiasm? Uh, yeah, probably. I mean, I was more enthusiastic about Corbyn, but I mean, now probably I would feel that if he had actually got elected, probably would have had a similar impact that um, Liz Truss getting, um, <laughs> right. getting in charge had in that the the kind of markets and... The, would have revolted sort of thing. Yeah, would have revolted and everything would have gone into meltdown a bit. So while I agree with his stance on a lot of things, I think that it probably would have gone bad. I have been a paid up Liberal Democrat. Uh, I'm just a little bit concerned that they still seem to think that to cure the problems of the country, they've got to look after the uh, lame and poor uh, rather than motivate people to win. Uh, have you given any thoughts how you might vote this year? <coughs> yeah, Monster Raven, I always do. <laughs> really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, Ever since they wanted to put sharks in the Thames in 86. <laughs> you know, they, they, they wanted to have the ban on noisy neighbours, which is lucky because I was up playing the drums at the time, so right. four o'clock in the morning. You've not often been on the winning team then in uh, No, no, I, I refused to spoil the ballot sheet. And uh, Fair enough. You're, you're a uh, perennial malcontent of yeah, the political you, field. You got it. <laughs> you got it. I, I, everyone that I speak to is completely undecided or probably saying they're not going to vote. Right, yes. But I always vote. I think mm. of those suffragettes and what they did. So I think we have a duty to vote. Will you both definitely vote, though? Oh, yes. Yes, yes. yes. Okay. All right. That's everything I wanted to ask. Is there anything else you'd like to say? Find us a good socially conservative candidate and we'll probably vote for them. <laughs> right. And is Bim Af Afalami that man? I think he could be, but he's hampered by... The, the problems within the yeah. Conservative Party and you know every day we turn on something and there's another scandal. Do you think you'll decide on the morning when you get in there and just... Yeah, yeah it, will, it literally will. Yeah. Something might happen on the on the last day or so of either humorous or something telling or oh yeah well he's worth it though. Yeah. Uh, do you think there's time for one more scandal? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's probably going to be one more scandal from each party. <laughs> oh yeah, one more per day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I must vote, so I think I'll vote Liberal Democrat. Right. I have been in this constituency such a short time as I'm not absolutely clear as to uh, where the votes will swing. Mm. But uh, the Labour Party document that came out, uh, I thought, was just a little bit. Dishonest. That probably rounds up all the questions I wanted to ask. Is there anything else that you'd like to say, perhaps you feel important that we haven't covered? No, I think you've got a very nice hat. Uh, thank you. Thank yes. you so There's the hat. What was it that, that drew you to the Lib Dems this time, if you don't mind me asking? They're just something different, and to be perfectly honest, um, our candidate here lives in a flat in the old council office building where I used to work a long time ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I thought, oh... I'll vote for him. Yeah, he could, he could do with an MP salary, I expect. Exactly. <laughs> I don't think you'll get it. Well, that's it for now, and it's been an interesting morning out in Hitchin today. I don't actually know, I'm just trying to think, did I encounter anybody who's voting Conservative? I definitely encountered a couple of Labour people along the way, which would seem to suggest which way this seat is going, especially under its new boundaries. Uh, there was that one chap who was, you know very much in favour of Conservatives over Labour, but was voting Monster Raving Looney Party and insisted he always had. What a character. <laughs> well, I guess we're going to find out how this seat's going to go. My instinct is it will go to Labour, just on the basis of the conversations I've had today. Um, but we're not going to find out yet. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, please drop us a like and subscribe if you haven't already, so that way you won't miss out on future videos. And yeah, give us a comment too. That's it for now, and there's only one episode left before the big day. Bye-bye.